Welcome to the Lone Star Keto Podcast. I'm your host, Amber. My vision for this podcast is to showcase experts in the keto carnivore community, as well as those who have compelling stories that inspire and give others hope. My wish is that no one has to suffer like I did. If you find value in this podcast, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification button. And as always, feel free to share. Thank you so much for your support. Hi, I'm Amber and welcome to the Lone Star Keto Podcast. Today I have a very special guest with us, Kelly Hogan, veteran carnivore and the founder of My Zero Carb Life. And she's also a teacher in real life. Welcome, Kelly. Hi, Amber. Thanks for having me. So Kelly, let's get started a little bit with your background. I want to know your health journey and just tell us a little bit about you. You're a teacher. Kind of talk a little about that too. Yeah, so I was heavy my whole life growing up. Um, I have a brother, no sisters, and my brother was always very skinny. And my mom, always very skinny. And my dad and I were always the heavy ones. And so I grew up hearing, you know, you look just like your daddy. I was like, yes, I know we're both fat. (laughs) And I didn't say that, but of course that's all I heard in my mind was, you know, you're big like your dad. And my mom was just so pretty and still is. And I always just wanted to, to be like her. Hmm. And, um, when I was about, when I was 25 years old, I really hit my highest weight. I had gained a lot during college. It wasn't the freshman 15. It was really more like 50. And um, it was a lot of stress. And also I had this little card. They called it a cat card where I went to college. And you swiped your cat card and it was all of your food. It was just your food card. And we had all you could eat buffets. And one of the cafeterias that was all you could eat was right next to my dorm. So you swiped one time you could stay for hours and just eat. And, and I did, I studied and I ate and I just wanted really good grades, which I, I got them. <laughs> and I also, well, there I just you go. Put, yes, I got the good grades, but I also, I gained a lot of weight and I don't even remember caring that much when I was in college, but when I graduated, I was James and I were engaged and I went wedding dress shopping and it was like, it suddenly mm-hmm. started to click like, my gosh, you are really big. (laughs) I hadn't even honestly realized. So I I started having health problems as well. Um, I started getting these boils and I've had people message me to say, what is a boil? Well, if you don't know, that's wonderful. But um, it's like a large bump that shows up on your body. And a lot of people either get them in their armpits, which I didn't. Mine was like on my thighs and my backside. Um, They're sometimes deep in the skin and they get Mm -hmm. staph infections in them. Mm -hmm gross but that's what I was Mm -hmm. dealing with and if they keep coming up what you have to do they don't just go away on their own typically it's almost like men will say oh like an ingrown hair yes but those will typically go away this is an infection and so I would have to go to the doctor and get them literally lanced and drained Mm -hmm. and it was awful Amber awful embarrassing because it was on my backside so here I was 262 pounds bent over the table at a doctor's office Mm -hmm multiple occasions this happened and I was just mortified at how I even got here and the doctor one day his name is Dr. Dunlap and he just retired a couple years ago he's here in my town he said Miss Hogan if you don't lose at least 100 pounds we're just going to keep doing this until one of us dies and I just cried because I had Mm. I had honestly tried I did not try in college but all through even middle school and high school, it was always in my mind how much heavier I was than most of the people. You know, when we were kids, there weren't that many heavy kids. Exactly. Honestly. Yeah. So I did feel like I stood out. Um, and so I told him, I don't, I don't know what to do. I have tried. I've tried to eat less. I've tried to move more. I don't know what else to do. And he said, it's the carbs. And I was only 25 and I just, I literally looked at him and said, what is a carb? (laughs) Because this was 2004. (laughs) I didn't know. I had heard of Atkins, but I did not actually know what carbs were. And so he was simple with me. He was, he just was very simple. And he explained, he gave me a little pamphlet that showed what carbs are. And on the front side, it was everything I normally ate, which was like cereals and fruits because I was trying so hard to be healthy again 2004 so people who were like what's wrong with her 
this was very normal thinking in 2004. I really thought I was doing the right thing by watching calories and eating less fat. And on the other side, and I was like, well, that's everything I eat. He said, don't touch any of that for a year. I said, what am I supposed to eat? And he turned it over and it was just tons of different meats and eggs and omelets and cheeses. And I was like, oh, well, I, I do like meat. <laughs> I, mean, I said, like, ribs and chicken wings? He said, yes, ribs and chicken wings, as long as it's not really sweet and saucy. Okay. And I said, well, how many calories per day? He's like, I don't care. I don't care. As long as you don't touch anything on the other side of that. And I don't care if it's your birthday. Okay. So I did it for one year. I went, I called my dad on the way home that day. And I said, dad, I'm going to go low carb. And he said, well, I've heard of that working for some people. And I said, oh gosh, I forgot to even look. Are potatoes carbs? <laughs> and he was like, yes, dear. A potato is a carb. I said, man, well, that's harder. He's like, yes, yes, this is harder. So but I, I took to it very, I studied that pamphlet. People have asked me, do you still have a copy? Heavens no, it, you know, 16 years ago. I don't still have it, but it was very basic. If you just look up the lowest of low carb vegetables were on the meat set, leafy greens, basically. He said leafy greens wouldn't kill you, but honestly, I've never liked leafy greens, so I didn't eat them. And I did at first start off with like some green beans and salads. That was part of it. So I did that for five years. And that was all prior to what I even say is my actual carnivore start date, which was 2009. And that's when I cut out the very last of the plants and the very last. But it was almost carnivore for even those five years. But in the first year, I lost 80 pounds and I went back and he didn't even recognize me. And I, by the way, that was that visit when he first told me uh, what a carb was, <laughs> was the very last time I ever had to have a boil lance. That was it. Wow. The last boil. Yeah. Um, so he really, he, he changed my life and I have thanked him in person many times. I continued going back to see him up until he retired. Um, like I said, about two years ago, I have not found a doctor to replace him since that is anywhere oh. close to his knowledgeable Amber. He even talked to me about the Inuit people, the Inuits. I was like, he the, was extremely progressive. Yes. That was, was a long time ago. Was yes, that when was. Atkins was, was popular? I, I don't remember. Atkins, I think had already peaked by then and was maybe okay. coming down just a little bit. And he did not even mention Atkins to me. Wow. I don't think he ever said that. He just said, I was like, is this safe? And he was like, you just need to go look up the Inuit people and you'll see that wow. they were some of the healthiest people on earth. Well, I did not, that didn't hit home with me too much because I, to me, as long as my doctor was saying, I trusted him a lot. Mm -hmm. So as long as he believed it was safe, I did not go home and start researching the Inuit people. <laughs> For five <laughs> years, I didn't really research anything. I just followed his advice. And the only reason I ever cut out the last of it was because it, it never got easier. For five years, it didn't get easier. I got skinnier, but I struggled. And the fact that I did this for five years, honestly, I'm very proud of myself, but it was not easy because I kept um, diet sodas because it said zero carb and I craved sugar and sweets. I ate all of the sugar-free mm. jello, all of it. Mm. I couldn't get enough. And, and so for five years, it was hard. And that's why I don't even claim those five as carnivore. That's that was low carb and people say well you lost a lot of weight that way I did and it was almost all meat-based nutritionally it was carnivore in my head it was not it became mm. so easy in 2009 when I cut that stuff out and that's when I experienced not just the change of figure I'd already done most of that it was a change of mindset I didn't crave it anymore the physical mm -hmm. draw to sweet was just dead and it didn't take but a couple of well honestly I was so close to all all carnivore by the time I officially started I didn't even go through actual withdrawals that time it was really just when I first went from a standard American diet so um ever since I made the official switch to carnivore it has just been such honestly such a game-changing joy to just eat animal products that I have spent 
a lot of time since then <laughs> just talking about it, sharing podcasts. I started a blog um, about a year ago. I started a YouTube channel and I just want to talk about it. Uh, Instagram about it. I t- share Facebook posts about it because I feel like there's still so many people out there who are going to get mm-hmm. boils lance who are struggling with infertility. That was me too. It wasn't until I became totally carnivore and upped my fat and started giving my body more of the fatty meats that I actually got a cycle back. People have asked, oh, you can have a cycle while you're carnivore. That's what it took for me to get a cycle was carnivore. (laughs) That very, very low carb kind of keto-ish. It did not do it for me. I am apparently very sensitive to carbohydrates and my body just thrives on all meat so that's what I do I just talk about meat (laughs) I love it and and you do such an awesome job of it Uh, I got a story about boils and it's it's kind of funny that we're talking about that because that is something that I didn't ever relate back to poor diet I just assumed it was just an obese thing. And I'll tell you why, (laughs) because where I got the boils and this is disgusting. Okay. Underneath the fupa, you know, where your overhang thing that I I had when I was like pretty obese and I had multiple times, these huge ones and they would get so nasty and they would eventually burst on their oh, own. And yeah. I, I remember being in um, a cardio class and I literally felt this pop and I ran to the bathroom and it was everywhere and oh, it girl. left this gapping hole like this yeah. big. And that was the most disgusting thing. And I had, I had that multiple times and I had gone to a dermatologist, you know, and they gave me this, uh, I think it's like a, a antibacterial type of, um, ointment. Yeah. And that helped a whole lot, oh, but okay. I, I never related that back to diet. I just assumed it was, you know, fat and, you know, being in the weird area. That is inflammation right there. It's inflammation. And that's what he told me day one. You are inflamed. And he did not, I wish he had, but he said, I don't need to do a test on you to find out you're inflamed. He's like, I can tell by looking at you. I'm sure just the fact that I was that obese and that I was getting these boils over and over, he knew I was inflamed. Well, I can have high sensitivity CRP test done now and it's 0.5. Whatever that number would have been then, I wish I knew what it was for comparison, but it went from bad to awesome. And knowing that there are people in cardio classes, Amber, there was somebody today in this world in a cardio class, busting their butt, trying to lose weight, thinking that's the answer with a boil somewhere. And that is, that's heartbreaking. It is. we, We have to just keep sharing because they are still thinking that these problems that they have is because they're eating too much and not moving enough. And that mentality of eat less, move more. It just puts all of the blame on the person. Oh my God. Yes. Let's talk some about that because like, I I, want to hear your experience about that too. But when I was in all these cardio classes, this girl was in the gym two to five hours a day, six to seven days a week. And I got down to 800 calories. So I kept eating less and moving more, eating less and moving more till it finally got to a point where I was like, where, where am I supposed to go? Am I eventually going to be working out 24 hours a day and eating nothing? Right. Because if I altered any one of those in, in the opposite way, I would start gaining weight. Yes. Yep. I know. And there are people still there right now. So <laughs> yeah. it, it, it just really, I remember it so well. It just hurts my heart to think about Me too. how hard I was working. Mm -hmm. And how little I was eating at times, not college excluded, (laughs) that that was all me. (laughs) But, you know, after that, I tried really hard as a newlywed. I wanted so bad to be pretty. I wanted to feel confident and I didn't. Um, My husband, when we first got married, he was a pretty skinny dude. He's he's never had a major weight problem. I wouldn't classify him as skinny now, but he's never (laughs) struggled like I did. And I remember I would go and buy um, like things to cinch myself in, spanks Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And I kept thinking, I wonder if, is this hiding it? Is 
<laughs> is this doing the trick? Bigger clothes, like oh. a tent is going to yes. make it better. Yeah, yeah I look I back at too. pictures and I'm like, oh, good God, what was I thinking? Yeah, you were thinking, don't see me. Yeah. Don't see me. That's all I ever yes. wanted was don't see me. When I sat down in any chair or couch, this was the first thing I would do. Oh, I did right? that too. We yeah. all do that because we don't feel comfortable. We don't want to be looked at. And I didn't even want my husband to really see me. And that's a sad place to be. So when I was, mm-hmm. when I was a young newlywed wife, I would go out and try so hard to run the neighborhood and to eat less. And what I was eating was fat-free cereal with fat-free milk. And I just <laughs> stayed fat. And it seemed like it was a total mystery. And so if if you and I and all the other carnivores can just help demystify how that's possible, then that, that's the only thing I really know to do for people is to help just try to keep it simple and accessible and help take the mystery out of out of it for folks. Absolutely. Okay. Let, let's go back a little bit because I like to dig a little bit deeper. Okay. And I know for me, like you were talking about how your mother was thin and mm-hmm. you would look at her and want to be her. Yeah. Talk a little bit more about that. What, what did that make you feel like? How do you think that shaped you moving forward before you found carnivore? What was your like mental you know, thoughts and et cetera. What were you feeling? So, oh man, I have found pictures of my mom. She did not take a lot of pictures of herself in fitted clothes because she, well, my dad was a pastor my whole Mm. childhood and adult life. And so she was the preacher's wife. She didn't wear a lot of va-va-boom clothing, but I have found a few pictures of my mom before he was a pastor where it was just t-shirts and shorts Oh, girl, there is no movie star out there. And I kid you not, nobody with a hotter bod than my mom. (laughs) Wow. I got to see this. I got to see this. I will will send you a picture. Okay. As in total, just gorgeous. And I was just never built like that. I am still (laughs) not built like that. Me, I'm like, (laughs) I got this up here and then... (laughs) <laughs> well, no, can't claim that one either. <laughs> but, Have some of mine, gladly. <laughs> what I remember always feeling was that I, I knew she would like for me to be skinnier, but it's never, this is what is still so impressive to me about my mom. She never said that. She never, she would sometimes say, how about me and you take a walk? And we would take walks. Or, oh, you want to do an exercise tape with me? But it was never, it was always, you want to do it with me? And I was like, yeah, because it was something to do with her. And so the only thing she knew to do also was move more. And she had never struggled with weight. So she didn't, she didn't know what dieting was even about. She had never had to do it. Wow. Um, but it, I don't know. I'm impressed by the fact that she never, even in college. And I think, I was just thinking the other day when I would come home, Every few weeks, I think it was probably very hard for her to not comment, but she never did. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, Awesome. Yeah. So it could have been a lot worse is what I'm saying. There are moms out there who would have probably said things like, Kelly, you know, what are you eating there? Mm. Never. She never did. So I think part of the reason I think I'm pretty (laughs) in like still intact mentally (laughs) is I'm not terribly scarred from bad parenting. My parents were really really good and that's awesome it is it really is but in my own mind I always just knew that Mm -hmm. I just always thought I bet she wished I was little and cute I just want to be little and cute that's it I know don't we all right did you ever get picked on as a kid did you I really did not okay good okay I would love to claim some of that but I can't um I went to a school where even though I knew I was one of the only heavier kids I was also just a really quiet, lay low kid that I doubt most people who went there even remember me at all. I just, I didn't get picked on. I wasn't popular, but also I was just kind of a wallflower, but that's kind of what I wanted to be. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I totally, yeah. I understand that because like when I was at my heaviest, I wanted to be part of things, but I didn't want anybody to see me just like what you said. 
that. Yep. I don't want to be seen. I want to be a fly on the wall. I want to yeah. enjoy and I want to be there, but I don't want anybody looking at me. I don't want anybody judging me. Right. And so a lot of times I didn't do things because I didn't want to be put in that position, but I desperately wanted to be there. And yeah. so you're like, can I just be a fly on the wall? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. That, that's a horrible place to be. It really it is. is. And we should I, all be so lucky as to feel like Hey, I have something to share with the world. Look at me. I have something I want you to see. I have something, I bring something to the table. You know, that's, would be a wonderful place for all of us to get to, but man. Be a lot happier. (laughs) Yes. Because we all have something to bring to the table. There's no one, there's no one out there that should be, you know, up against the wall wanting to be a fly on the wall because whoever is watching this, you have something to bring And by hiding, we are all missing it. We're missing out on that. And there's no one else who can bring it. No one was made to bring what you can bring. So I love that. So positive. So positive. And and, but it is very true. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can get to a place physically where you can then mentally Mm -hmm. let yourself, because it's two different changes. It took me a while to get mentally where I could feel comfortable and confident. Um, and some people are there no matter no matter what weight they're at. Some people are mentally right there. They're bringing all of it because it's not. How is that possible? I, that I, I envy me. those people. Yes. I would envy that. Like when we would go to the beach and I would see these overweight people in bikinis and they're strutting their stuff yes. and they don't give two craps. They mm-hmm. don't care. And I yes. would just look at them and go, God, I wished I could be like that. I and know. my hus- husband looked at me and said, why? <laughs> And I said, yeah. because look at their confidence. That's and, right. And he would say sometimes like, oh, but should they really be wearing that? And I'm like, who cares? Look at them. They're happy. Who cares? Yes. You know. So <laughs> mentally, they're already there. They're bringing what it took for me to lose 100 pounds. They're there. Same. But to be able Same. to have both, to have a body where you are healthy and you can move and you have energy, because I didn't have that. Even if I had mentally decided I'm going to come out of my shell I physically didn't have what I have now. And that is just a sense of just energy and vitality yes. and movement. I had to nap a lot back then and I never need naps now. So part of it is in your head and your heart. And then part of it is literally just your physical being. I agree with you a hundred percent because I have pretty much endless energy, really. Yeah. I, 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 and my moods are considerably better. You know, like we talked right. earlier is the whole stress thing is really kind of messing with me right now, but I'm working on it, but it would be so much worse if I was yes. in the position I was in before I would have yeah. already had a freaking nutso breakdown depression. Oh God, (laughs) it would not have been good. And now I I can handle it. I'm not saying I don't get, you know, a little pissy, but here and there about things, because I'm just like, really? But, (laughs) but for the most part, I mean, life is so much better. You see things in more colors instead of black and white, instead of, you know, the whole just immediately jumping into an emotional fit or at least I I kind of used to do that I I admit it and you know our friend Brett right our other fellow uh, redneck um you know he always talks about how uh, this is the answer to world peace you know if everybody had the proper nutrition and took care of themselves the way they should and give their bodies what they need they would be in a much happier place and you wouldn't have the depression the anger the you know all of that as much as you get right now Oh, you're right. Yeah. World peace, baby. World peace. Have some steak. <laughs> Metabolic health. Yeah. yeah. Eat your steak, whatever it is you want. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you have been a carnivore for a really long time. You're one of the veterans, yeah. not as much as Charles Washington. No. But you're, you're pretty, you're getting, you know, there. So let, let me pick your brain a little bit. Okay. There is uh, one thing that I get questioned about a lot as a coach and I'm going to get your take on it. And I get asked, what am I doing wrong? Because since starting carnivore, I started putting on weight. Mm -hmm. What do you tell people when they come to you with that question? Well, that's, it's a hard one. It is. 
because people gain for very different reasons. Um, when I had first switched, okay, so five years, almost carnivore, but with artificial sweeteners, okay, and going to the gym, I didn't mention this, I was going to the gym an hour every morning, cardio for an hour every morning, and cardio mm. for an hour every night. I was really having to work very hard, and one of the reasons I started to research, can you just eat meat, was because I didn't think I could, I couldn't sustain that forever. I was exhausted, but that's what I was having to do to just maintain my weight. So that was when I, I Googled, can you just eat meat? Can you be healthy and just eat meat? And that's the day I found Charles Washington. Hello. <laughs> that was a very good day indeed. It was October 23rd, 2009. I'll never forget. Um, I met Charles that day and Dana and Lisa Wiedemann, Amber O'Hearn. Oh, yeah. I mean- the whole crew wow. was already there. There were hundreds of journals there. People are like, well, how did you find out about carnivore back then? I was late to the carnivore game back then. <laughs> there were tons of people there already. I was the newbie. So I started reading their journals. Oh, Joe and Charlene Anderson were there. It was the place to be, girl. It was. Wow. So, so I started reading and reading. And that very first day, I knew this was me. And I never had another diet soda, not since October 23rd. That was it. I was sold. They were all so healthy and beautiful and made it sound so easy. So boom. I, oh, and they also said, if you're wanting your cycle back, and I did, I wanted a baby so bad. If you want your cycle back, you need to rest. You need to lay mm -hmm. off that gym and eat more meat. I was eating a lot of very lean meats by that point, because that's the only way I knew to keep the weight off. But again, I was drinking diet sodas. So it was, it was playing with my blood sugars when I thought it was safe. So... I immediately <laughs> on October 23rd started eating all of the fatty meat and stopped going to the gym and I gained some weight. And my husband, who is not a carnivore and knows nothing about nutrition or low carb at all, but is a wonderful person, he's like, what did you think was going to happen? I was like, what do you mean? What did I think? Was he's like, you stopped going to the gym and you're eating three pounds of meat per day. This <laughs> seemed obvious to him, right? This was not what I expected to happen at all, <laughs> and but it did. It was slow. It wasn't like, boom, I gained weight. It happened for six months. My first six months of legit carnivore, I gained about 20 pounds over that time. Mm. I look back at pictures now. People said, yeah, but it was probably muscle. No, it wasn't. It wasn't muscle. I knew it wasn't muscle. I wasn't lifting weights or doing anything. Now, it's possible that my, people say, yes, but your organs become more dense. Maybe so. I did not measure them, but I did not necessarily <laughs> feel, I felt, I felt kind of loose, right? Mm -hmm. I felt like I had gained 20 pounds. My clothes were a little snug, but when I look at the pictures, I can't really see it. I mean, I'm a tall girl, so 20 pounds spread out. It's not like it was obvious to anybody except to me <laughs> every day. So mm -hmm. the problem with gaining weight on carnivore is when it's happening to you, you don't know that it's ever going to stop. And so I would step mm -hmm. on the scale every morning and it would have gone up another, you know, a few ounces. Oh no. Another day, another more weight going up every single day for six months. And you don't know that it's going to stop because you're just putting your faith in these other people who have gone through it. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like a lifeline. I, I would just complain to them constantly. <laughs> And they would say, look, you're not the first carnivore to gain weight. When you start, you will not end up obese just eating meat okay and they said also you've got to keep thinking about why you're doing this in the first place and so I did I just kept thinking baby cycle baby cycle you want to be healthy not just skinny but I really just wanted to be skinny so, <laughs> but I tried to I just tried to keep repeating it to myself and they begged me to stay off of that scale and I would not do it didn't did not stay off of it for several years. I did not take that advice. In fact, only up until the last couple of years, which is, is now year 11 of carnivore. So it probably took me nine years to finally be like, okay, stop. This is stupid. Um, so I gained and I stressed. And I will tell you that the stress of stepping on that scale every mm. day probably did not help a darn thing because cortisol is going up and your body feels like it's in panic mode. I was panicking myself every day. And when your body is panicked, it does not care about losing weight. Yeah. When your body is <laughs> sick, 
it does not care about losing weight. Bodies do not necessarily care what size pants they fit into. Bodies care about being well. And so when I didn't have a cycle or when I had inflammation and those things, my body didn't care about losing weight. It wasn't until I finally was fed till I ate and and my appetite was crazy. I could easily eat three pounds of fatty meat. I was adding fat. I would go and ask my butcher for fat trimmings and I was just fixing it up in the skillet and eating it straight. Insatiable. So the fact that I only gained 20 pounds is actually pretty great. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, because I had gone yeah. from being so hungry for five years to j- then just, and even if I had wanted to cut back, I, I couldn't. It was like completely out of control how much I craved that fat. Wow. It tasted like, like euphoria. It was just amazing. So I really, really ate. And then... At about the six month mark, I could fe- I felt pretty full with two pounds of meat. And people have said, oh, so you stopped eating so much. Now stop. They're getting cart and horse confused with that. Because I didn't cut back on how much I was eating out of a decision. My body was finally fed. And I felt satisfied with two pounds of meat. And yes, at about that same time, that weight started to come right back off. That 20 pounds came off more in like six weeks than six months. It was very fast. And then I immediately found out I was pregnant, <laughs> which was awesome. But, you know, I'd strive so hard to get that 20 pounds off. And then I got to put on the best 20 pounds of my life after that. Um, but I don't think that if I had just decided at, say, the two-month mark, okay, I'm going to make myself start eating less now. I don't think it would have had the same effect. I think it was a very Mm. important part of the process that I eat and rest until my body was healed. And then it's like, I felt a breath like, okay, you don't have to keep, I didn't feel insatiable anymore. And I've never felt that again since except for an occasional really hungry today like honestly today I felt ravenous but most of the time in general I don't feel like I'm out of control anymore and so I do Mm. think that when people are gaining weight it is important to feed your body to focus on healing if you can and I didn't stay off the scale (laughs) Um, Charles Washington used to always say girl you need to get yourself a flowy dress and I was like a Holy dress. He's like, because every, every time you sit, you're focused on that, that band on your pants. And every time mm. you look in the mirror, you're looking for that thigh gap or something. He's like, stop, just get yourself a flowy dress and relax for a little while. You're going to look beautiful. Okay. And he meant like, right now you're going to look beautiful. Not like once you lose this weight. No, he was always like, you're eating well, you're glowing. He'd say, girl, you're glowing. Just get you a pretty dress and feel good. So Mm -hmm. it started to sink in. And if people are gaining and they're eating a ton of dairy, I always advise, especially if it's pasteurized dairy and typically not butter, cheese and heavy cream is really what we're talking about here, right? If you are eating a lot of cheese and heavy cream, I I typically say you got to cut that out because you won't really know if you have reached your satiated place to take a breath. A lot of people can't feel that when dairy is involved because it can be very addictive to people. So even if your body is fueled and fed and you don't need but two pounds of meat anymore, you can just keep putting that away. And some meats are like that too. Bacon for me, a plate of crispy Mm. bacon. It doesn't matter if I'm really hungry or not. I could just eat it. Give me a plate of bacon and some cheese and no matter the time of day, I could put it away. And that might be okay in the beginning. But if you've been doing this for a while and somebody is concerned, I'm not losing weight, then I would say, maybe find some meats that don't make you feel completely out of touch with hunger signals. So sometimes plainer is better. For me, it was burger patties. People know I'm like the burger patty. (laughs) I don't want to say queen. That sounds awfully uppity. (laughs) I just love my (laughs) burger patties because I can eat them and feel full, but I don't feel out of control. You know, I can... There's nothing terribly appealing about them unless you are hungry. Um, so 
okay, relax, de-stress the best you can. I know life, you can't just quit your job right. and, and kick the kids out. <laughs> you still have to feed them <laughs> and go to work. Yeah, I need to rest. Kelly Hogan says so. <laughs> but if you're able to cut out some stressors or spread them out or get more sleep, get extra sunshine, take walks, not because you're trying to burn off that dinner, girl, but because it's good for you. It is a de-stressor to take a walk. Take a walk with somebody and talk about your day in the sunshine. Are you kidding? That's an amazing, that'll bring you right down. Music, put on some tunes mm-hmm. that you love. Go for rides, find a release. Find dancing a for release. me. <laughs> we go dancing every yes. weekend. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, I'm such a bad dancer, but I still do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> when you come to Texas next, we're going to take you dancing. I don't know if that's going to happen, Amber. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> oh, come on. I would love to come back. I have been to Texas, but when I go to Texas, I go to eat. Y'all are not ready for this dancing. <laughs> oh, but, no, but we are. Hey, I'm trying okay. to get uh, Ken Berry and Nisha on board, too. So With Nisha coming says, down to your yes. dancing? Yeah. Oh, she's probably great at it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know she is. Yeah. But Ken's like, mm, I don't know about that. Yeah, I would be sitting back with Ken while you and Nisha dance, and we'd just be sitting back probably eating <laughs> <laughs> oh no 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 I, I i don't believe that no no, no. <laughs> okay um, so uh yeah. your that's, advice that's is very is, is, okay i'm so yeah. sorry it, there's a slight lag and so every time you start i don't realize oh, until yeah. I, start. I apologize on the topic of weight gain still if you have already cut out pasteurized dairy and you say I am taking walks I've cut out all the stress that I can cut and I'm just eating meat not even my favorite meats I'm just eating meat and I'm still gaining weight then I honest to goodness do not know of anything more for a person to do other than time time people you know will say I haven't lost 120 pounds well this is not my first year of carnivore you know, right? This is not my first decade now of carnivore time. I have seen people spend two to three years thinking they're never going to lose weight. They weren't necessarily gaining, but they weren't losing. And then like my friend Elizabeth, Elizabeth Stern, around the time of her three year carnivore, suddenly just started dropping weight. I said, what did you change? Now she did cut out salt and I'm not telling people to cut out salt for her she feels better and she did lose weight but I don't know if that's I don't know if that's why and I don't think that's necessary for everybody but that's the only thing she says that she has changed other than time Mm -hmm. you know it took a very long time for most of us to get to the place we were when we first started carnivore unless you started this at say age 12 (laughs) you had many years of bad eating habits Mm -hmm. and bad food choices to overcome so if you're already doing all of those things please let go of the guilt that you're doing it wrong and just accept you know what I'm doing this really right and I just need to do it a lot longer (laughs) that's probably it what what was what was it for you how how long do you think this process was from the time that you gained your weight until it started coming off again how long of a time period I only gained for six months okay six months but Again, you know, some people who are starting carnivore are much older with much bigger health problems than I had. I was missing a, my period and I was about 30 years old, right? And I had had boils, but I had already taken care of the boils by going almost carnivore. At, by the time I started carnivore, I didn't have any major health issues. If people have leaky gut or autoimmune and they expect their body to prioritize the scale moving, No, your body wants to heal that gut. Your body wants to lower inflammation. And these things don't always happen quickly. And I know that's so annoying. I know it is. It's so (laughs) annoying. I wish I could fix it. I wish there was a one size fix all, you know, just fix the answer. But that's that's about the best I've got. I could just high five you right now. (laughs) Thanks, let's do it. Ah. All right. <laughs> Love it. Okay. So, so let's talk about some more issues that you see with people who first are starting carnivore or even who have been on it for a while. What do people come to you and ask you about the, the top problems you're seeing? Well, a lot of times people will say I'm still having cravings and mm. I'm like, really? <laughs> that surprises me so much, but almost always 
almost always there is either a I'll say well how long have you been doing this and they're like five days I'm like okay (laughs) fair enough you are definitely still having cravings you might want to give that a few more weeks but if you know if somebody says I am still having carb cravings and they tell me they've been carnivore for a few months Mm -hmm. that is very surprising And typically when I ask, you know, have you had anything sweet tasting? Yes, they have. It's typically things like, well, yeah, I mean, I still use my breath mints or I'm still using, you know, sugar-free gum, sugar-free this, sugar-free that. There's still, it's in there somewhere. Dairy. Dairy is sweet. It really, it's got sugar. It's enough. Pure heavy cream to me tastes like I remember ice cream used to taste. Oh, I, girl, you know, yes. My, <laughs> my taste buds have really changed that much that pure heavy me cream too. is very sweet. So yes. if your brain is getting any flash of sweets, it will not let go of that quickly. And I tell people, I don't care if your Tic Tac say carb zero, your brain does not care. <laughs> it's just getting a flash of sweet. And that's that lighting up of the brain and they can literally see it on a scan, no matter what the the source of the sweet is. And some people, it turns out it's not sugar-free anything. They're using honey because they've heard that it's carnivore. If you are eating honey, it tastes sweet. Oh my gosh. I had heard people say for so long, oh, it's not really that sweet. And I had not tried (laughs) it at all as a carnivore. None. And I never really liked honey before I was carnivore. And honestly, before I was carnivore, it probably wasn't sweet enough. I was just using using straight up sugar or um, syrup, what I meant to say, syrup. But as a carnivore, I had not tried it. Well, this was the first taste of sweet I had had in 11 years. But about 10 days ago, I tasted one spoon of honey because I have a CGM. Uh-huh. Amber, uh-huh. my brain lit up like ding! what is this it was an, a yeah. feeling I had not experienced in 11 years what about your tongue D- does like, like just yeah, sweet all over your tongue to where I, you just feel like <laughs> I, I was appalled at myself for liking it oh. I was it was such a like flash of holy Moses I forgot what sweet even tasted like and I'm a little sad that I have now remembered. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I've been, I, I would not advise this experiment on anyone with less than 11 years. Because even for me, it was a little wow. bit enlightening. I have not touched it since. And I will not. That was enough. It raised my blood sugar about 40 points for three hours. Wow. Okay. That was one tablespoon of honey. Okay. So for me, I can definitely say for myself, that is not carnivore for me. <laughs> <laughs> it it mm. may be for somebody else maybe you can not eat, for me oh, not, no. Mm, no not me no I, I think a lot of the people who are big advocates of honey never really had either never had an obesity problem or never had a food addiction problem with sweets to begin with or high and so, insulin resistance too yes I mean, it is probably very hard for them to understand why this fantastic animal product could be a problem <laughs> but it can be a problem. So if someone is still having cravings, and I do hear that, you don't need to look at food labels necessarily, because a lot of people have, they've already done that. They see carb zero, carb zero. You need to literally think, have I tasted anything sweet? And there's your problem, because that's the all it takes. Other problems I see people have is just simple mimicry where they are trying very hard to just copy what they have seen and heard work for other people whether it is you need to eat all of the salt or none of the salt all of the electrolytes none of them all of the butter sticks or not like if you are only doing something because other people are doing it and it's not working for you and it doesn't even taste right to you especially if you've been carnivore for more than a couple weeks, you can start to trust this. Your tongue is so smart. It is all connected, your brain, your tongue, and your gut. And if something tastes too salty for you, do not add salt just because someone else says that it's best to do so. Your tongue knows the same thing goes for a stick of butter. If you sit down with a stick of butter and you think, gosh, gross, please don't eat it. Your tongue and your brain are communicating and telling you this is not wise. On the flip side, 
don't avoid fat simply because you've been told that fat will make you fat. So if you sit down with some butter and it tastes amazing, <sighs> your body might just need some fat. But it can be overdone. I have seen people gaining mm -hmm. and gaining weight, and it turns out they're eating so much butter, and they're only doing it because they've seen other people doing it. So I think mm -hmm. anytime we're just copying what we think we should do and not actually giving our body what it's telling us we need. I did that on purpose back in the fall with organs, particularly liver. I had set out to do a, I thought maybe three months would be a good enough time. I have not eaten many organs during my 11 years. I just, I don't like them. <laughs> Me a, either. Me. It's either. not a cool mm -hmm. thing to say, Amber, but I just don't. I know. I, I, I'm, I agree with you. I've tried girl. I've tried. Yes. I don't crave it. I don't want it. I don't enjoy it. No. So I thought, okay, but people say, if you feel good on carnivore, just imagine if you were nose to tail. All right, then let's try it. Okay. So I did mm -hmm. 11 years without. So about the time of my 11 year carnivore I decided to eat all of the organs. I went out and bought beef heart, beef liver, chicken liver. And I was eating quite a bit of it raw even because people say, right. you know, if you want the full benefits, Amber, you got to right. eat that stuff raw. Yep. Eating more fish, salmon roe, which I know that's not an organ, but basically Ugh. all of the outside yep. of the box stuff. Yep, right? yep. I did it every single day for a month and I had to quit. Every mm. week I felt worse and worse. I was eating huh. a lot of chicken liver, which Amber O'Hearn says she is not surprised at all that I felt bad because the taste of chicken liver, by the way, to me is revolting. And I'm not a picky eater. I am one where, I mean, I've eaten squirrel before. I just made <laughs> yesterday that if somebody were to serve up some possum burgers, I would probably eat it. I'm not picky, but it tastes revolting to me. Agree. And and I think my body knows I don't need whatever it's got. I think you're right about that. I, I do. And, and that's happened to me too. But when, when I had my vitamins checked and, you know, your B12, all that kind of stuff, mine was like on point. Yep. And I have no desire for it. Zero, not it. I find it gross. I've tried it. And I mean, I'm all up in that. I feed that to my dog. So I'm not like yeah. freaking out because it's no. nasty looking. I touch it every day. I touch it. You yes. know, and I'm it's not a big deal. It's not that at all. I'm over no. that. I used to be yeah. squeamish. I'm over that. I don't like it. I just don't. All right. And I truly think if our body was missing something that was in that chicken liver or beef liver, it would not taste that bad to us. I think I our body would know what we need. So when I did force it, force it, force it. And every day it's like, it was tasting worse and worse. Mm. I can imagine somebody asking, well, what do you mean sick? I was not sick on my stomach. It wasn't that I, it was as if I was allergic to a cat and I had started carrying one around on my shoulders, <laughs> my <laughs> eyes, every single, I just throughout the month, it got worse and worse, itchy Whoa. eyes, scratchy throat, drippy nose, puffy. I just felt so bad. I finally one night just took an antihistamine pill, like a Benadryl and I felt better. So I originally thought, mm. you know, I've got COVID. <laughs> like, <everybody laughs> else was like, well, right. It's everything. It. It's I COVID. COVID. I got it. <laughs> yeah. And, and then it just kept progressing with like this itching stuff. And I don't have allergies. I'm not even allergic to cats or trees or anything, but it just kept getting worse. So I wow. finally took a Benadryl and it got better. I was like, oh my gosh, it might actually be what I'm eating. And it's, it, after a month, I did force it until the end of the month. And then um, as soon as I cut it out, it took 48 hours and I was good as new and felt wow. great. But I was not following the advice that we give people all the time. Mm -hmm. Listen to your body and uh -huh. was screaming, stop it. And I wouldn't do it. Wow. Because you're told over and over again, and, and you're not a true carnivore. If you don't yeah. eat nose to tail and you know, blah, it's so good for you. If you're not eating that, you're not optimal. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just going to be a not true carnivore that feels uh, awesome. me too, girl. Me too. <laughs> I, I've tried, I've given it an honest effort. I've done videos yeah. where I actually taste test things. Okay. I, I, I kept trying liver. I like my husband likes it. My mom does. So occasionally I would make it, I haven't made it in a while, but, uh, and every time I would take a little, little bit of it to see if maybe my taste is changing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I think that is not. not a bad idea. Right. I think it's not a bad idea to occasionally when I buy a rotisserie chicken, I, I can see the little liver in there. 
and I have taken a nibble before. And there are <laughs> times through the years when it doesn't taste as bad. Mm-hmm. I will say that a rotisserie chicken liver tastes a little bit better to me than any other way I've had it. Oh, but it still wasn't great. And, you know, they're tiny little things. Yeah, little, People yeah. who think you need to be eating all this liver every day. How many livers do you think an animal has to feed the tribe? <laughs> there are that many exactly. Livers. I was thinking about that today because if, if that is so integral to what our ancestors ate good god i mean there's only so many organs like you said there's one liver i mean now the taste of beef heart Mm -hmm. i did not find offensive at all i thought it was delightful and i did not find that it made me feel bad on the days when i didn't eat the liver and i did eat the heart i didn't quite it took me a long time to put this together because again i was really thought i was just getting sick but i don't think it was the heart i really think it was just Liver. liver Yeah, Mm -hmm. I I, I totally get that. Um, I didn't have any necessarily reactions. I just, it was extremely unpleasant. Yeah. And like I said, I wasn't really grossed out. It's not that. I'm kind of over that. My hands in raw meat all the time. And it's no big deal. I don't even care. It'll slap that stuff around, whatever. I don't care. (laughs) It doesn't bother me anymore. You know, I think I'm pretty, I could probably deal with watching a deer get gutted now without going, oh, God, you know, (laughs) not that I really want to, but I could, you know, because I'm kind of over the squeamishness, but the taste, no. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't work for me at all. I, now, you know, there are people who say that they absolutely love the taste of liver and that it does mm-hmm. make them feel good. Yes. And for those people, wonderful. I'm so glad this liver is not going to waste. I hope they will eat it all. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. We'll um, save it for you. I give it to my dogs yes. occasionally. Not not often, uh, but like, you know, a couple times a week, I'll give them yeah. liver to add in there. But I was yeah. kind of afraid of overdoing the liver for even them. I haven't done enough research on that yet, but you know, yeah. So we still have liver, but I don't need it. (laughs) So for those people, I I really do think that if it tastes good to you and you enjoy it and think it makes you feel better, then I think they should eat it. So for sure, organs, that's the case when you should eat them. They taste great and you feel good. Do it. (laughs) Totally agree. Absolutely. Because I mean, we should be listening to our bodies, right? And right. once you clear your body of all the junk and can actually trust your body's signals, yeah, it, it makes sense to me now. Yeah. It, you know, I even did the ancestral health, I think, I think it was liver supplements. Uh-huh. So I could just, or, you know, take them yeah. without having to taste anything. And that was awesome. But I, I didn't notice any difference. I'll be honest. Okay. I'm not saying it didn't help me. I'm not saying it didn't help me, but I didn't notice anything like people like, Oh my gosh, when I eat liver, I'm like, Whoa, you know, no, I did not feel that at all. And I I didn't feel that anytime eating liver. So yeah, there you go. (laughs) go. But maybe we're just anomalies. I don't know. Yeah. No, I I, (laughs) I don't think so either. A lot of people No. Brett too. Brett. Yeah. Yeah. Brett's not here for it. Mm -mm. Yeah. uh -uh, No, (laughs) no. Okay. So more uh, issues that you've heard. Um, I think under eating, a lot of people are Mm. scared to really eat. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, that can slow everything down. Your body definitely needs meat if that is your only fuel source you've got to give it some meat and I know it can seem scary to eat a giant steak (laughs) because that is not what we have been taught our whole lives is acceptable especially as ladies you're always you know it should be a large salad with a tiny piece of meat no it it's really got to be a big piece of meat if you're on a carnivore diet don't hold back eat until you are plenty full Don't leave the table thinking, man, I really wish I had, then get it, get you some meat. And then I do think it is a good practice to wait to eat until you are ready to repeat that again, that we shouldn't just be grazing. So I think there Mm. is a a matter of people under eating, but then because they under eat at the meal time, then they're snacking through the daytime. Right. Yes. Yes. Fill up at the meal eat the big, big steak, and then stop eating. Go live life and do something that does not involve food for as long as it takes for you to want another big steak. And I am sometimes guilty of this too, because I'll eat my big steak. And then at bedtime, I'm like, but I just want a little something. And obviously I'm not going to pull out another ribeye at 10 o'clock at night. So I'll, you know, I'll go in the fridge and get some cheese. 
but I'll tell you that, well, right now I'm not currently actively trying to lose weight. And so I don't think it's the end of the world for people to eat cheese, but if they are trying to lose weight mm-hmm. and they want their body to be at the best place possible, I think it's best to eat a big meal and then to not snack on little snacky cheeses and stuff in between to wait until you are actually ready. Even if it is 10 o'clock at night, go ahead and get that skillet back out, cook up a big steak <laughs> and eat it. Because if you're that hard up for a meal, you just need to go ahead and do it and stop playing these games with maybe one more meat stick from the fridge, maybe one more cheese slice. Ugh. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think those are probably the primary things that I see people doing in the beginning that can cause problems. Okay. So how does somebody know when they're, they've eaten enough? I get this question a lot, which, Mm -hmm. you know, now for me, I'm kind of like, well, how do you not know? But what do you tell somebody who honestly, their hunger signals are so crazy that they, Mm -hmm. and plus in their mind, oh my gosh, this is a lot of meat. And I shouldn't be eating all that meat. What do you tell people? So I'm one where my hunger signals have never been really good. I almost feel like that part is just a little broken on me. And eating meat means that it doesn't matter so much if I'm, if I'm accurate, right? It doesn't matter so much if I overeat because it's just meat. It's fine. It's not going to turn to sugar and, and make me gain like the other foods did. But I can still really eat past what I, I really needed. And I have started to really try to reflect on that so that I can help other people. Sometimes I will get up from a large meal. I mean, where I know for sure this is enough food for any normal human, (laughs) a large (laughs) meal. And I can put it away. I can. But about 20 minutes after I get up, I sometimes get like a little feeling of empty. Like I just... And it's almost a feeling of hunger, like I could still eat more. And I have to mentally remind myself of what I just ate. Like, You can't be hungry. That was a one and a half pound steak with an egg and butter next to it. You can't be hungry. So uh, I've started just to remind myself, okay, you were full 20 minutes ago. But I tend to get, and I don't know if it's just part of digestion, what it is, this little feeling of emptiness for it, but it passes very quickly for me. I don't, I don't know how many people get that. And so if I can just remind myself that I've eaten and do something else, drink some water, this is not me trying to under eat. This is me leaving the table well satisfied where I'm not hurting. I do not like the feeling of like, mm-hmm. oh, I eat too me much. either. Some people are, will say eat until you're Thanksgiving full. Well, I remember Thanksgiving as not being Nuh-uh. comfortable. Uh-uh. So that is not a pleasant phrase for no. me. I would say comfortably full, where I feel satisfied to get up from the table without wanting for anything else, but I'm not hurting. That's how I like to stop. I've had enough. I'm not gorged or I haven't engorged myself. I don't know. I'm full and satisfied. Then I get up. But I do sometimes have that little like, oh, I I feel like I could have eaten more. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's just me. But if I would just drink a water or do something else, then it passes. And then it's like my body is suddenly like, oh, thank goodness you didn't eat any more because you are really full. Like the fullness almost leaves for a brief while and then comes back. Have you ever had that happen? I've never really said this out loud. (laughs) I think I know what you're talking about. There is like this hollow, empty feeling. And it's like, like right at your, like below your breastbone where your ribs come together, kind of like it right there at at your stomach. There's like this empty, almost a, a, a slight burn feel like oh that's hunger and yeah. it, it, I, I know what you're talking about that but feeling. then it passes yeah oh yeah so, yeah yeah and I've told people like I'll eat so much and then I'm immediately hungry again I'm like but are you I mean if yeah. you've eaten legitimately more than a pound of meat you probably aren't actually hungry in less than a few hours I mean yeah nutritionally you shouldn't be (laughs) right absolutely yeah Yeah. that's plenty you know what I have found and this is really interesting because I was a binge eater I I did suffer from that so what I find very surprising to me for me is the fact that I physically cannot overeat meat 
I, I physically can't. Okay. I know people who can. And <laughs> yeah. so there's always exceptions. But for me, I can't. And what yeah. what a weird thing, and even today this happened to me, I, I had actually made an omelet. We were kind of mm-hmm. out of a whole lot of stuff and I hadn't yeah. had meat thawed out and all this. Anyway, so I made an omelet, not something I typically do. And I ate the omelet and I got down to literally the last bite. And I had meat in the omelet. I had some like leftover roast meat that I put in there. And I, I was like, it's just one more bite. And, I, and then I put it up to my mouth and I'm like, I don't want it. I don't want it. And so I left one bite and I do that a lot. And it's not like I'm going, oh, I need to leave one bite because it's a mental thing. No, it's, I don't want to put that in my mouth. I don't want to chew it. I don't want to swallow it. It's like, it's just, I stop even like the Brazilian places and you know, you're all geared up because you're like, I'm going to get my money's worth. So you're (laughs) all like, woo, bring it, baby, bring it, you know? And then I start seeing the food and I'm like, I'm so done. I'm just done. Wow. I, 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 I can't. And, and I was like, ah, yeah, I can. I can eat it. No, I can't. I've actually had to pull a piece of meat out and put it, you know, away because I couldn't <laughs> finish chewing it. And that has never <laughs> happened to me. Right. So yeah. I've well, heard of this. With people weird who say, I don't know. I, I have heard of that with people where they say, I cannot, once I hit full, I cannot put in one more bite of meat. Now yes. they say I could have put in dessert oh yeah yeah, or yeah. bread yeah. or something absolutely else, yes can't eat any yes. more meat but that is not me I <laughs> I can oh I can but um, you're doing fine so it's all good I mean you, you, because, you you've yeah. got this going it's all right <laughs> and with the CGM I tested ridiculous amounts of meat where I did leave the table for real hurting on oh. purpose I was like I am going to eat until I literally cannot eat anymore and that is a lot for me and that CGM did not go up my my blood sugar reading really I was going to ask you that because I hear a lot of people who talk and this happened to me too because I always had very low glucose like when I was keto it was it was low I mean sometimes like 68 or whatever I mean pretty low and it never never got above like 72 like even when I yeah it was crazy but when I went carnivore and I tested here and there I noticed it was slightly up not not like huge it's not like oh my god you're now di- diabetic no right. but it it concerned me because I was always used to having really low blood glucose yeah. have you heard of that have you you know obviously yeah, you don't experience that yeah I think our set point changes quite a bit and I with um different diets can cause different set points and different humans have different set points um there was a time where mine tended to just run in the 80s that's just where it stayed, but it did not matter. The goal is not high, low, or any particular set point. It is just steady. You just right. want steady. So when I was in the 80s, and I was carnivore at that time, but this was when I was first starting. Um, actually, this was right before I went officially full-blown. So it was still the tail end of that five-year period of very, very low carb. Um, mine just tended to stay in the 80s, but it was very steady 80s, as long as I didn't eat any of the sugar-free junk um and then I've had time periods where I've tested mine and it's just been very steady in the 70s this time around and it's partly different devices too I'm assuming I don't know I'm only by the way I'm not diabetic for those of you who are wondering I'm just wearing this for fun the the company wanted me to experiment as a carnivore I'm about to do that oh it's so much fun I really enjoyed it but what have you learned yeah tell me all about that I have learned that now my set point with this device, and they do Mm -hmm. say, you know, it will vary some between different monitors, Mm -hmm. but the goal is not to have it at that particular number. It Mm -hmm. is steady. And mine has been running about 68 myself, Um, 75, almost round the clock. Now mornings, I do still run higher. That's a very normal thing. I was just, um, reading something the other day talking about that oh I'm not gonna also throw this out there I just gave up coffee yesterday for Lent mm. so um I'm on a little bit of a fog at the moment <laughs> Ooh, I was drinking a lot of coffee a lot of coffee so did that affect you did you try it with your CGM it, it did not affect my blood sugar. Oh, okay interesting okay some people it does I'm gonna the test only that thing, I'm so curious the only thing 
carnivore. Well, everything I ate was carnivore except for that bite of honey. And mm. it was the only thing that caused the spike wow, whatsoever. Okay. Other than just waking up in the mornings. So just waking up, mm -hmm. my blood sugar runs higher in right. the morning. Yeah, and that's then it typical. comes down yeah. even without me eating anything. And I know that sometimes it's very common for diabetics, but I also have read it's just a normal part of being a human. It is. Your blood sugar is. is higher. Yes. Um, stress is one thing mm. I learned when I would have that's a very what I want to know. A stressful class at school. I am a teacher and I've got, I'm a music teacher. So all day long, I've got six classes coming in and out. Full classes, by the way. I am on a full teaching schedule. You know, some wow. schools are only halfway mm -hmm. back. No, we are all the way back. Um, when I would have a really good class, <laughs> my blood sugar would run normal. And then I'd get one of those fifth grade classes. Mm. And I've got a <laughs> couple of them that are tough. They're just tough clientele, right? And and at the end of the class, I could look at those blood sugar readings and it would be a good 15 points higher without me eating or drinking anything. It's just stress. So people who are living in a very stressed out state a lot, and I am not mm -hmm. in general as a music teacher, as you might imagine, my life is pretty good. I don't have a lot of high stress, but when I do 15 points, right? wow. so you are okay. living in a panicked state of doing this, mm -hmm. this, this, this your blood sugar is being affected by that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So has there been anything that kind of shocked you or no. have you pretty much expected? <laughs> no. no? Yes. Yeah. I was surprised <laughs> that the honey caused it to jump up three hours, but I really did go into this expecting a lot of boring data which is the goal. And it was very boring data. I mean, pages scrolling of 65 to 70, 65 to 70 okay. all day, no matter how much I ate, people were like, oh, try burger patties with more salt versus less salt. Okay. That does nothing. Try a meal with a lot of fat versus not fat. That's what I wanted to know. No difference. A lot of fat, no fat, because I I've had... <laughs> Uh, I posted a picture of Valentine's dinner where I had Wagyu bacon, lobster tail, and a filet, and then I had some butter. Okay. And somebody made this little smart ass comment mm -hmm. about huh, way too lean for a carnivore, um, gluconeogenesis, um, that steak has turned into sugar, and I'm like, yeah. no. Um, in fact, I purposefully ate quite a few meals over the past two weeks where I added no fat at all none mm, okay and zero change in blood sugar including my burger patties which as you might imagine when you cook a burger patty including fast food patties which they cook those all the way through and they are not thick and juicy and fatty right mm. they are very thin and somewhat dried out when they are overcooked <laughs> mcdonald's yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes overcooks them i could eat my four burger a pound of meat four of those did not raise my blood sugar now that said it is a thing that eating really lean chicken breast mm -hmm. only with no skin mm -hmm. if you eat a lot of that i have tested that before mm -hmm. not this time around because honestly i don't I don't want to waste a meal on a whole pile of chicken breast. That's so selfish, <laughs> but I don't, I don't want I get to it. Down. I've done it before when I used to check my blood sugar a lot and it would cause my blood sugar to go up to eat only extremely lean meat. And, okay. um, a London broil is another meat where you don't see any fat on it at all. It is just red meat, even uncooked. You don't see any fat on it. And one time I ate, about two pounds of only London broil and my blood sugar did go up. I don't know, 10 points. It was nothing remarkable, but mine with a steak, a steak where you see any fat at all, even if it is even slight marbling, I ate a huge T-bone by itself and it did not go up, not any one or two points, but then sometimes it would even come in one or two points lower and I would check well, with this thing, it keeps checking, you know, just every mm, little yeah. bit all the time, every 15 minutes. Um, but I would take note and circle and share the data every hour afterwards. So at the one hour mark, the two hour mark, and always with meat. By the two hour mark, it was always back to where I'd started, if not below. Hmm. Very yeah. interesting. I can't wait to try that. Um, 
I, I have kind of put it off for various reasons. I've had the CGM for a while, and I also have three tests that I'm doing. I'm redoing the cortisol that I talked to you about okay. and um, some metabolic markers and uh, something, oh, the female hormone one okay. and just kind of see where I was at. So yeah. I wanted to do that too, to get kind of a baseline, see where I'm at starting this. Cause I've already done some tests, but I just wanted to see as I start this and I haven't done that yet, but I do have the test now, but then my husband got sick. And of course, what, what did I jump to? Oh, we must probably have, oh, you know, the big yeah. C, right? Yeah. And so I was like, I don't want to waste my CGM when I'm sick because your glucose right. gets kind of funky when you're sick. So That's I put right. it off a while. And then we've had this silly, crazy weather and hadn't been able to go to the store, eh, whatever. So I haven't started yet, but I'm looking forward to it. And one of the things I want to test is the difference because I like lean meat. Okay. I do. I, I do add fats to it. I'm not a big fan of eating just fat. I don't crave it. I don't want it. I don't like okay. uh, ribeyes. I don't like fatty. I know. Oh. I know. I know. I know. I, that's almost, you know, oh my God, you're not a carnivore then, right? But I, my favorite piece of meat is filet, hands down filet. Okay. And so I'm really curious to see if this is having any effect on me, the fact that I do eat a little leaner, but I do. I, I mean, I have plenty of fat because even yeah. like my burgers, I like 85, 15, that that's as fatty yeah. as I can go, but okay. I'll put just a little bit of butter on it. Like, you know, half a teaspoon, a half a tablespoon, something yeah. like that. Just, just a little bit. And, and then if I eat chicken, I, I don't like dark meat. I don't like the skin. Oh, so I know I like breast. I know. And that's the worst thing. You, well, I, I don't want to say the worst thing, but you know, that's not the part you want to eat, especially as a carnivore. Right. But I'll eat like butter with it. It, that's honestly yeah. one of the few fats that I actually enjoy. Okay. And so I'm real, I can't wait to try that and see what happens. Yeah, I'm you know, curious to get, see what happens. I, I am, hope I'm it's very good curious. because it's like, if I'm one of those people who need more fat, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do because I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't want it. Oh. So yeah. Well, you and are a people, special little snowflake. Then. I know, you right? Am I not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm special. All right. <laughs> And my husband would agree with that and not, okay. in, a, not, in, not in a good way. <laughs> uh, I don't yeah. know that there's anything wrong with it. I just don't hear that very often. I know. I know. And I've tried because I'm like, what's wrong with me? I don't enjoy it. And I don't matter of fact, for Valentine's instead of the filet, I kind of toyed with doing the tomahawk just uh -huh. to say one time I did it. And especially yeah. this, this swanky place we went to. And I mean, that sucker's huge. And yeah. so my husband kept saying, you know, you want to do it at one point. And I'm like, but I already know I don't like ribeyes. So right. I don't want to waste that when I know their fillets are so good. So yeah. I got a fillet. Well, fillet. I think you're doing exactly <laughs> the right thing. I don't, like I said before, I don't think you should force down fat if it doesn't taste good to you. Your body yeah. obviously knows you don't need it. I hope, I hope that's what it is. I, and I, ho I, think I hope true. my CGM agrees. I mean, I, I believe know, in so. your body, Amber. I, I, I do too. Body. And I'm really hoping because ugh, that's not something I want to do. I just okay. don't enjoy it. I just, I've tried. I, I just, I don't, I don't like it. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> kind of one of those weird things. I don't know. Okay. Let me see. Let me see where we're at. Ooh, we've been yapping. Okay. Let me just see here. Okay. I think we've pretty much covered everything that I had written down. Yay. And then a few things. So do you have any closing comments or advice to give anybody? Oh, Amber, I don't think I do. <laughs> Just Seriously? <laughs> you? <laughs> um, you know, I do think it's important for people when they are first getting started to try to find, or it was important for me, I should say. There are folks out there and they're loners and they feel perfectly fine to just tackle this on their own. But I really needed a community, especially in that first six months when I was struggling. Mm -hmm. So in addition to all of this fabulous advice today, I hope something was useful to folks. I would say find your people, find your tribe. There is a Facebook group out there for anything you want to do, including all things carnivore. There are carnivore groups that are all about fasting. There are groups that are banning fasting. There are groups that are all about only beef and groups that are all about diversity. Find a tribe if that appeals to you. And it does to me. I'm still with the same group of people um, that was at the original forum, the same group that I fell in with on October 23rd. They are still helping me through 
every day we chat and maybe not every day most every day we have our own little <laughs> Facebook messenger group that we even talk to each other and it can be such a, a useful helpful thing to find some like-minded people who are going through what you're going through and who can support you and tell you especially if there are some folks who've been doing it a little longer to say oh my gosh I remember that part I remember and it gets better just hearing that was so assuring to me hearing people say oh I remember gaining weight at first and it gets better. And for people who are scared to start carnivore, and I do get people who tell me this, I'm so scared to start carnivore because I've heard about the weight gain. Stop, stop with that. Most people, most people do not gain weight when they cut out carbs. That is not the case for most people, especially if they're eating a standard American diet and then cut out carbs to eat carnivore. Most people lose weight, not gain. It is squeaky wheels like myself and Amber. <laughs> and when we don't experience the weight gain that we want, we are the ones, you know, who want to talk it out the most. But there are thousands of people on these groups that are just posting success stories day in and day out. They're not gaining. So you can go to these groups and see their success. And you can also find people like us, Amber, who are still who have been through the struggle and who can say but it gets easier it doesn't you don't keep gaining forever it, this is temporary and I think a community as long as it helps you to feel better then it isn't tribalism I sometimes hear that thrown out you know the tribalism of carnivore me being a part of this community doesn't feel like tribalism it feels like family I and agree I agree that's how a good group should make you feel like you're with someone that can just be by your side and help you out. So I hope folks can find a group like that. I agree. I love that. And absolutely. I mean, you're always going to have extremes, but most of the people in our community are pretty freaking amazing and yeah. very willing to help. So yes. absolutely find your tribe. I found mine. I love, I love my people. Kelly's part of my tribe. Um, I love my thanks, people. Thanks. So uh, I just want to plug something that I just absolutely love that you're doing is that carnivore news. Oh my God. I love it. It's the cutest thing ever. It's just like Thanks. the most perfect platform for you. I'm just like, I'm watching that and I'm like, good God, she's a natural at this. So y'all need to check it out. I will put all her information below. So please check it out. Hey, while you're here, subscribe to my channel. Yeah, and do that. Y'all subscribe Kelly. to her. Yeah, subscribe to me and, and check out Kelly. I will have all her information, I promise. And Thank she's you. amazing. If you don't know who she is, go find her. Go check it out. Keep doing <laughs> the carnivore you. news because I look forward to that. It's kind of my favorite thing. I was oh at my, my God, father-in-law's house. Um, this has been now several months ago. And I was at my father-in-law's house on a Sunday night. He cooks for us every weekend. And they, they were all the family just sitting around talking. And I do not know. It was like lightning struck my brain. You should do a news broadcast that is all about carnivores. And I just started smacking James. I was like, James, James, I just had this great idea. And he's like, what is wrong? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to do a news show that's about the carnivores. He's like, okay. <laughs> that sounds like my husband. Yeah, it's, it's somewhere he would go, oh, God, what now? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> And I love it. Since, Keep doing it. Keep doing thank it. Thank you. I've had a great time with it ever since. So thank you for saying awesome. that. Well, yeah. Kelly, it has been a pleasure. So much fun talking with you as always. And we need to get together more and, and yes. chat some more. Keep doing you. Love you. And you have a thank wonderful you. rest of your evening. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show, Amber. Keep up the good work. Y'all.